Hi there, guys. My name's Octavian Zero. This game is already partway undergo, so let's just get right into it. We have Blue Team sitting around on their side of the river, Purple Team sitting around on theirs, but they're both jockeying for control of the other side. Neither one of them really wanted to give it up, but we've got all five members of both teams around here. And their skill shots being tossed out of plenty. There's a void spikes landing as well as Q landing from the Lee Sin. Mm, a lot of Q's landing from the Ziggs. He's already run through nearly all of his mana bar, tossing them out, but he, he's, he's hit a good number of them, so perhaps it has been worth it. But both sides are just going to back off. Some of them quite literally backing all the way off to their home base. And this is going to be 100 casts, I believe. Minions has Episode spawned. 52? Uh, I think? I think. Numbers. Numbers are hard, especially when it's been so long since the last episode, and I apologize for that. I've been... Uh, one, I've had a few IRL issues to work out. A little bit of illness, but don't worry. I'm perfectly fine now. I'm feeling much better. And also, I've been on a little bit of a Team Fortress 2 kick, in case you <laughs> haven't noticed. I'm sure some of you I have lots of those kind of videos popping up on my channel. This was supposed to be an overall sort of gaming channel in the first place, but then I got really into shoutcasting, so it sort of became that, but I'm still wanting to head it back in that direction a little bit. But I digress, let's get into the game proper here. We have up in top lane, Elaine Lee Sin, facing off against Rumble. Now that is a matchup I've not seen in a very long time. Down in bottom lane, we've got Zyber and Twitch facing off against Lucian and Thresh and... I don't know if you guys know this about me, but my least favorite champion in the game is probably Zyra, so I mean, a little bit of me that's actually rooting for the Lucian Thresh here, you know, I'm supposed to be impartial, but it's just, it's, I just don't like the plant lady, she's too annoying, never miss plants that always get to hit you, and skill shots that are just everywhere, and yeah, there's no way to play against her without get, taking damage, but nice! Dodges there from Graft Ion, dodging back and forth away from the Electra Harkins, turns around the trade. He gets the Tempest, but not the Cripple, not going to be following it up any further. Meanwhile, down in bottom lane, we have a little bit of skirmish going on. Five stacks building up before the expunge is dropped, and serial number goes down incredibly low. Cotty getting taken down to half health, too, as Zyra does, does back the uh, Grasping Roots in a bit of a wrong direction. I'm going to assume that her mouse just did some twerking on the keyboard or something. Got way out of her control. As Skill Shots Avenue in the middle lane, they are throwing him out. The Ignite has dropped the auto tag as well, and in the end, it's going to be Ziggs picking up the first blood. Well done by the time the middle your bomb man. Flying on in, Craft Ion going to be landing the Tempest, then the Cripple, but this time he doesn't get quite as good a trade as last time. Rumble overheats a bunch of those super magical auto attacks. Ooh, really nice grasping roots from Alchemist to there. Catching Kabi out, heal, exhaust, so many summoner spells used, but expunge in the end is gonna be sealing the doom for Lucy and probably the first proper gank of the game up in top lane. Mr. Addy is going up into Is That Savior? Repel up into the air, comes back down, but only to be greeted by a flashing Kazix. Chased away by the bug. So far it is one to one on the board. One kill go to each team. That's how one to one works. And we're back over mid lane, tossing out some bombs. Zig still has yet to go back to base and spend that money, but he certainly has got a good amount of it, so he can can spend it once he needs to. And speaking of spending money, we've got Twitch can be going back to base. He can spend all that gold that he got to picking up the kill down in the bottom lane. One matchup we didn't have time to touch upon before a lot of action happened, and it looks like we're going to wait a little longer, actually. Up in top lane, Graft Ion going in onto his that savior turns around, though, at the very last second. After using all of his cooldowns on him, we have Kazakhs and Elise both going up the river. This might be an explosive fight here. Q has just been burned by Lee Sin, so Elise doesn't really want to follow in on his gank, just tosses back the volatile spiderling, and then wanders away. All of that tension building up just. But, but not really much. Nice Q, thrown off at least in. Hits Kazix, reveals that he's still in the lane. That is a very, that was a very crucial Q, actually. Kazix had wandered around in the back bush, trying to come up and be all sneaky like, but Lee Sin caught on to him. Lee Sin tossed the Q into the bush, and he got that vision. As we see Grimoreth, tossing out more skill shots onto Sentinel on the mid lane. Landing lots of them, finally. One of them does this. As we see the Lay landing onto Alchemista down in the bottom lane. The auto attack lands thereafter as well as Kadi jumps in onto Twitch, taking advantage of that distraction. No, oh, Hook doesn't quite land, but Alchemista taken down fairly low, and that is the downside of Zyre. She has lots of skill shots. Oh, the, the satchel. Oh, there we go. Grimoreth picks up the kill on the Sentinel. That was 
A lot more aggression than I expected from the Ziggs as the Ignite has been dropped. There is that Savior. He's trying to land the Electro Harpoons, but he doesn't quite have them up. Gets a few more ticks of Flame Spitter damage before turning around and going back to the minions. He's been able to force this reset away from him a good few times, but he hasn't really picked up the CS lead. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, with the play, landed onto Zyra. She falls over. She's in her death badge. She's going to shoot out that true damage at some point. There it is. Going to be helping Super Rap Rappa bring down Cotty, but the play takes out the Twitch just in time to give Dangerous Game over to Cotty, and he gets that health back so he doesn't die to the tick and die. And he's now 4 to 1 to Blue Team. And that's. Is more of a lead than I expected them to have in six and a half minutes of the game, given how the first three or four minutes of the game went. But then again, you can never really call a game by its first three or four minutes. That's just a very reliable marker, as we see up in top lane, a roam from mid has happened. And we're out tossing out the explosive minefield, and the satchel CCing up this rumble as best as he can. There's the ulti gonna be landing and getting him the key to kill, while Lee Sin played distraction. Got Rumble even burned his equalizer as well, so that's quite a lot burned by Rumble over in the top lane. I mean, he died, and he also dropped his ulti, so that's going to be a big disadvantage in any coming fights between him and the Lee Sin. i just like to take a moment to look down at the items there. Between those two top laners, we've got a Seeker's Arm Guard on top of a Dorian Shield for the Rumble, so he's going to be a very defensive route so far. I'm imagining he's probably going to get some more magic damage in that build eventually. I'm not to say that Seeker's Arm Guard doesn't give him some, but it's not exactly the most damage-centric item. As Kha'Zix are a little bit caught out in the jungle here, he's brought down the half elf. another bomb, another auto-attack lands. He's getting taken down very low, still chased away. He swapped down to bottom lane. So there's Zyra roaming up, and from the middle lane, there's Sentinel roaming down. The stun doesn't land, Cocoon not quite connecting. His Graph Dion is going to be dashing in onto a minion, then using his... He to slow down Savior, but Savior just has too much damage to turn around with Overheat now. He's got those auto attacks running, but he can't cast any spells, so Graph Dime's coming out ahead here with that Brutalizer pickup. The Q doesn't land, really though. Now he's forced to dash away to a minion as Rumble takes that opportunity to turn around and do some damage of his own. He's got a bottom lane. Exhaust is being dropped on the Kadi as Super Drapa is trying to cut away, get into that ambush, so that he can come back on in with the attack speed bonus, but he doesn't want to re engage. He's been brought down too low in terms of hit points. And serial number and Cotty doing another good job to keep up a favorable trade. Field goal on that hook, though. Yeah, that was the other item I wanted to get into. And beside really working out for Lee Sin there, the brutalizer that he's picked up, that's going to be essentially countering the Seeker's Arm Guard until Rumble can stack it up a bit more, since Seeker's Arm Guard does give only a small amount of armor until you have it stacked up. I mean, even after that, it's not a terribly huge amount, but it's, it's very efficient for the amount of armor that it's giving you in return for the amount of gold that you pay once you can stack it up. So, certainly a good item to pick up, and it builds into Sony's Hourglass. Strong and in general, as the Equalizer has been dropped, but not really too much. A bail and very nice hook from Thresh, landing onto the invisible Twitch. Beautiful predictions there. Too bad he had Flash up to get out of the box, but still, that was quite a nice play. No kill garnered for them, but well done. I have to applaud for him a little bit. Up in top lane, overheating Rumble, turning around the Flame Spitter. On to Graph Dion, and it seems like top lane is still an area of contest, despite that game working out for Lee Sin and him getting the assist, and him e and even Rumble having his ulti burned, he couldn't really take advantage of that window in which the equalizer was down. I believe the next time we saw them fight, he did in fact have his equalizer up again, so it wasn't really that huge of a difference. And Rubble has just been doing a great job being a lane bully. He has this Lee Sin at half or less health all the time. He's sustaining up with his W's able to do that. He has enough AD that just getting the extra life steal and spell vamp from that secondary effect of his W, the Iron Will, does mean that he can at least survive in lane, but he's not exactly driving well actually to be fair he's been doing quite a nice job of keeping up in terms of cs as that plant's gonna spot out a little bit darts at it but alchemista has to be very careful she's very very squishy on that zyra you see another gank coming out the top lane from kazix and try it try it little by little war of attrition think board bring it down 
very slowly. There's the Zyra ulti. Flash away from Kadi so he doesn't get knocked up. Heal burn as well. And that is all the summoner spells for that Lucian. Pop down in the bottom lane. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Kha'Zix thrown down there sometime. But it looks like he's actually focusing his attention up here in the top lane where Rumble has been pushing this whole time. Getting that piece in under the tower. Getting him down to half health. If they have Rumble open, which they do. There's the Equalizer. Pop back to the W from the Kha'Zix. Slowing him down. Quite a bit of slows. The Ignite is dropped on the Savior, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Sentinel dashing away from the minefield, but not going to be able to survive. Or oh, maybe a post-mortem kill. No, Ignite does not take down. And we have kills happening in the top and the middle lane. And sorry about that. Just need to grab a drink of water. Been talking non-stop for 11 minutes now because there's just been so much action. Ooh, that is very interesting. You look down in the builds there, you can see that Ari is... 3 and 0 in the lane is picking up that triple Doran's ring, really just trying her absolute best to stay relevant in that lane because Ziggs has gone 4 0 0. He's picked up three kills in the lane against the Zari and he's also roamed up the top and he took out that Rumble once. Yes, that was that was the uh, time where the Rumble dies. It wasn't a release gank, it was a Ziggs gank, and I feel very silly for my mistake earlier, but I digress. He's 4-0-0, oh, and, oh, and that is certainly not a place that you want the enemy Ziggs to be at. So, she's just really trying very, very hard to stay relevant in this fight. And I think that's a graphical glitch, because it looks like one of the Doran's rings is on cooldown. So, she's not going to be able to use the activated ability of that Doran's ring for a little while. Man, I guess that's really going to... And that's really going to hobble her in the next few fights, not being able to activate her Doran's ring. I mean, that's a huge disadvantage. See how she'll ever be able to compete. There's the W landing from Twitch. There's the slow from Zyra as well, but Zyra is so squishy. The exhaust is dropped onto her. She flashes away. Twitch all burning. Taking down the minions as well as doing some good damage. Now Demorad is going to be in trouble. He's taking down the towers. We can run a little bit in that direction. Drops down his ult as well. He finally falls. Shut down by Necrolisi. And now we have Mr. Addy forced to flash away Central. Waiting for him to come down from the repel. Pick up that kill. Double kill for Kazakh. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, we have a duel going on. Between is that savior and Graf Dion. Graf kicks him into the wall. He flashes away, but not before the Q lands. Turns around with the equalizer. Can he catch up? He has Graf slowed down for a little bit. Q lands. He goes back in. Tempest going to be finishing off the kill. That was a nail bite fight. Serial number, you were sitting on a war. Alchemist is so low on health, though. He can just get one hook. One CC. Just like an auto attack onto that guy. There's the hook that he needed. Flies in. Drops the box just to block up the Twitch. Didn't really need it. For the Zyra, she falls over. Super Parappa gonna be falling as well. Two for O trade down the bottom. I mean, that's as good. You get two for the price of nothing. I'll take that. Sentinel, come on, man. Nice landing with Charm, but Grimorad's damage is just too much. Sentinel gonna be falling over. 5 1 and O oh on the Ziggs, and that is the downside of Kazakhs having gotten the double kill in the middle lane there. It, it's not a bad thing to give Kazakhs a double kill. Certainly take that gold and make use of it, but it means that Ari didn't get the double kill and she was having a hell of a bad time in that lane already, so the fact that Necrolisi picked up both of those kills in that gank situation, gank return gank situation, just means that Ari is still down in the pit. Even though it did bring Kazix into this game a little bit, as up in top lane we have Grimoroth roaming in onto Savior, the hook lands because Thresh is up here too, he's roamed all the way from the bottom lane. Oh. And that, that's a very dead rumble. He had nowhere to go. He comes flying out of the sky on fire. I'm gonna clear these minions out pretty effectively. Maybe get another tower for themselves. They've already got one tower in the bottom. There's no reason to take, no reason to not take another one at the top. As we have Super Parappa and Alchemista though, they are pushing in the absence of serial number. Without that support, I don't think that Lucian can really hold the turret for too long against them, so they'll have to keep trading turrets, but actually, no, he's, he's managed to get rid of that minion wave fairly effectively. He does have some pretty good AoE wave here as Lucian, he can toss out the piercing light across the wave. Ardent Blaze is okay, too, especially once he gets a few levels in it. There's the Cancun landing across the lawn to Alchemist, a dash for from Kadi, but there's the... There's the Zyra Okaki, Moth, and Necrolisi is hiding in the bush, and Kali's gonna be going down here the instant, and Mr. Addy gonna be falling because, what well, I'm sure. Yep, yeah, and comes down from the sky only to die. Double kill for Twitch, and that, that is where they want him to double kill. 
Twitch can get that goal, Twitch can get fed, and that's certainly going to be able to bring them to the late game. Which is where they're going to need to go, because top lane, top lane is doing perfectly fine, this is doing quite well. Ziggs is doing amazingly, and he's really difficult to deal with, especially in the late game, so they're going to need some sort of answer to that. If they can burn him down quick, then they can fight him, but up in the top lane, we have another fight. These two would love to go at it. Dragon's Rage is going to be saving Graf Dion's life. He tosses back the Q, don't go in, don't go in, Fred. Meanwhile, down on the other side of the map, we have a dragon attempt going on. They do manage to smite secure it, even in the face of the Ziggs bomb, so well done by that Kha'Zix. Sorry, tosses back the Q. Now, at least uh, you might be in trouble leaping over the wall. Grimorant is going for the 1v3. He gets the kill on Desire. Serial number shows up to help him out, but he does fall in the end. Shutdown gold going over to Ari, and the one for one there really isn't worth it for Ziggs, because that... Well, that's, that's shut down gold going over to Ari. That's going to be bringing her back into this game, if anything is. So, I don't know that that was really worth it. We're back up in top lane, though. Mr. Addy queuing in on the Sager. Tosses the cocoon, but just barely misses it. So, it's forced to walk away with a few of her legs between her other legs. I don't know. She doesn't have a tail. And on back to home. And he's just finished off. He's... Zonia's Hourglass, that's quite a big pickup for Rumble there. Gonna be going with some Magic Pen right there after, that's a good plan, especially considering that Lee Sin has picked up a little bit of Magic Resist himself. Well, no, I mean, I guess he hasn't, seeing as it's on cooldown. I think there's some sort of bug with the inventory right now. Uh, that's, that's actually just, just really rather silly. Anyways. One thing which we should take note of at this point is how many red trinkets we've got on both sides, because that's actually quite a big deal approaching the mid-game. But we'll get back to it in just a second. Crap Dyer, using Dragon's Rage on the Sentinel, already did half of his health with just Dragon's Rage and Tempest Q lands, but he doesn't want to follow it up. However, Grimorant is more than happy to chase this one down. Minefield as well to bring in Necrolisi, and there's the Ziggzalt. Not going to be healing anybody, but certainly causing lots of bother. Ooh, Q does not quite like it, but I don't think he really would want to follow that one up anyways, even if it had connected... We've got another big item pick up here, in addition to that Zonia's Hourglass, we've got a Deathfire Grasp coming from the Ari, so she's been having a tough time with it so far, but with that pick up as well as the three Doran's rings and that magic penetration coming from her booties, she uh, might be able to make something happen here. I could see her one-shotting the, um, the Lucian, or perhaps the Ziggs, but there's the damage from Grimorath. It is real. Alchemista going to be falling over this now. Mr. Addy is in lots of trouble. Equalizer slowing up the spider. Flame Spitter bringing him down, and actually Super Grappa with a little skewer gets that kill, and now Serial Limit's getting knocked up by Alchemista. Zyra really wants this, but Thresh gets back under his tower. Speaking of towers, they can go right ahead and land some auto attacks onto that baby. Down below half health already, but the Q lands from Thresh onto the Kha'Zix. He falls over. I don't know what he was doing that far up. They're pushing well, but they don't quite have the tower down yet, so it's a little bit of an odd scenario there. And Twitch is going to head on into invisibility and rush on away with that extra speed bump. Ooh, flash forward from Graf Dian. Q thrown out as well. Can he catch up to Alchemista? W forward. Doesn't land the Tempest though. Alchemista just nixing him at every turn. As Connie gets hit by the charm. No, no. Zyra does fall in the end. Very squishy, not very mobile. But Lucian as well is rather squishy. If a bit more mobile, still though, getting hit by a charm. Ooh, on right into the face of that one. Tried to ult away, but got hit by a hook. A well laid ambush from Serial Number and Graf Dion. Well done by them. We swap back over to the top lane where Rumble's been pushing for a good little while. Lee Sin's gonna clear out those minions and we have a moment to look at some of the items. So it looks like Zig is going straight into a death gap. I mean, he got the double Gorn's right, to be fair, as well as an Athenes. He's already completed an Athenes. I didn't even notice that. That's, that's pretty uh, scary. But he's going into a death cap immediately thereafter, looking to get a ton of raw AP, which is not a bad idea. Ziggs has wonderful scaling on the majority of his abilities. I believe the Satchel Charge doesn't have any scaling. It still does have scaling, does damage. Um, so getting that death cap right away and getting the most AP bang for his buck is going to mean that he's going to be doing lots of damage, which, well, that's, that's the job of a Ziggs, so... 
Good on him. For doing his job. Everyone does their role in the communistic society of League of Legends. His counterpart, Ari, has, as I said, finished off the Deathfire Grasp. That's an important build. Looks like she's going into perhaps a Void Staff, perhaps a Death Cap of her own with that Blasting Wand. I have seen some, seen some Aris pick up a uh, Rylax Crystal Scepter as well, which is where that Blasting Wand could be going. It's unlikely. Ari doesn't really need it, but Dash 4 from Grapdine doesn't get hit by the Snare, though, so... Oh, ooh, lands the slow Alchemista! Get hooked and... This is the downside of Zyra. Very, very squishy, not very mobile. Killing still going over the red hell. The switch man brings down Lee Sin, and Kha'Zix takes down the Saints, and this is a disastrous turn of events. Serial number gonna be falling. And then there goes Elise. Ziggs does manage to take out Twitch post mortem, but Kadi is in lots of trouble. Savior lands the key, lands the flame spitter, and all of that magic pen makes short work of the Lucian who is lacking magic resistance. That's an ace going over the purple team. They're going to go ahead and push up the middle lane. It's going to be the first inhibitor tower of the game falling it. Just about 22 minutes in. I don't see any way the blue team can defend this. And yeah, they, they do not manage to. Perhaps they can defend this inhibitor. Yeah, purple team realizes this. They can go ahead and back up. They don't want to overextend, get caught out, and end up giving up some messy kills. So perhaps they're looking to set up an ambush. Sentinel and Savior could very well pull off an ambush if somebody were to unsuspectingly walk into this bush. And it looks like Serial Number is going to be doing that. The first touch wouldn't miss. The second one hits, as does the charm. Serial Number drops the fox, but he is not blocked in this world. He falls over. Killing spree to rumble, but Sentinel and Savior are now on the run, being chased out by Mr. Addy. There's the Sunny Tower Glass, but that's just delaying the inevitable, my friend. Ziggs gets the shutdown gold as Graf chases after Alchemist. Alchemist is getting hit by the Tempest and the slow. However, uh, Necrolisi is here to help him out. <laughs> Dragon's Rage immediately. I know. I, he wants none of that. And flash forward from Kadi as well as the dash going to be bringing off the Kazakhs. Graf, Graf, did you get this? He's trying. He wants this now. Now he's going to keep... He's, He's gonna not keep chasing after that, and Ziggs ulti is way off, that's impressive. But they're still gonna go out and drag him. Must be the first drag of the game for blue team. Taking that one down in uh, short order. Smite secure along with a Q from Mr. Addy. Always good to use an ability along with your smite, especially if it's an execute ability. It allows you to secure that dragon. Not that there was any real chance of purple team smiting that one away, but it's still good practice just to do it in general because those objectives are so important. And in the next season, dragon is only going to be getting more important. So learning how to secure your smites in the best possible way is of an imperative order. So. And all you junglers out there, go out and do that. Learn how to press Q on Elise at the same time that you press F or D. I know, it's very difficult, but you can do it, I believe. I believe in you. Go out there with that knowledge in your heart that you are believed in by Octavian. Then, you cannot fail. Alchemista laying down some ward coverage. Not really too necessary around that area, seeing the dragon has already been taken out, but there is no ward that's a bad ward. So perhaps when, like, when my team places three wards in the same bush. Supervision! No, sadly, it doesn't work like that. Ooh, there is Lee Sin going with the Q, but he did not realize that there was a cat in the bush, but he did not realize that there was a spider in the bush. This is a 2v2 for the ages. Lee Sin falls over his Lethalizer, wears off, but it doesn't matter. They still have enough damage to bring down at least. Meanwhile, down on the bottom side of the map, Sentinel's a little bit caught out, but they're going to have down fairly low. Forced to ult defensively, though, as Siren drops a beautiful strangle thorns, wonderfully done by Alchemista, securing the kill for Ari and for Twitch. And we've got a double here. He's the box! Serial number gets the kill! But then the ace to the post more than poison dot of the little rats. As up in top lane, we have Savior pushing alongside his good old friend Kazix. They bring down the turret while Purple brings down the turret in bottom lane too. The Sentinel and Alchemist. This is starting to look a little bit green for blue team here. They do have an equal number of kills, but they in no means have an equal number of turrets and flashes right into the snare, gets slowed, dashes forward from the W, still he wants this, he lands the slow down, he's to the Q as well, and Zyra does not succeed in flashing, so Lee Sin picks up the kill. Ooh. Sorry about that, I needed to grab a drink of water just as a charm happened, so I flexed it and and so you might have heard it through the water bottle that I'm drinking from, I'm... 
profusely apologetic for that. <laughs> that forward from Gun. Going after these great camps. Most powerful adversary he's faced all game, but he manages to defeat them. Gets a good pocket full of gold with that. And as far as the late game goes, which is where it looks like this game is going, because we are 25 minutes in, we see the Baron. The, the Necrolisi, I don't think you can do the Baron. I really don't think you guys can do the Baron, but they seem to disagree with me. Okay, they do finally back off as Necrolisi goes down to a quarter of his hit points. There's the Zig so but it doesn't quite connect. Nice, nice try. Nice try, Gerber. He doesn't quite get it. Electro Harpoon landing to slow down on fresh. Now Savior to escape. The Savior has finished off his land and That is a large item spike for the run. He's going to be doing lots of damage. I mean, he's going to be doing a lot of damage before, but he's going to be doing even more lots of damage. As you can see by those Electro Harpoons, one of them landing on the serial number. He's doing about an eighth of his hit points, maybe a tenth. I don't know. Numbers on the hit points. And there's the equalizer drop. Cutting the team into two. Alchemy is going to be following it up with a very nicely placed strangle points. Go down incredibly low for him. Struggle stuff. Oh, and these can't quite finish off the side of the test. Just about in the end. Taken out with those way too many resources used just to bring down the support. And that is the third ace of the game going over to Purple Team. Wonderful usage of their AoE magic damage spells on the ground. They've got that Zyra and the Rumble combination. That's quite a powerful combo right there. I'm gonna go ahead and go for a neighbor right here. And really, why shouldn't they? Well, I guess they shouldn't because Rumble wants to spam the sound. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's a little funny. I'll give you a few little funny points, they do. And get the inhibitor. Now they've got super minions streaming up middle lane. Now perhaps they can go for a Baron fight. Still be risky though. Here's still a Zig who just picked up a needlessly large rod on top of that completed death cap. So he's going to be doing lots of AoE magic damage. And Baron buff, as we all know, makes it so that magic damage is more intensified by people basically taking that off of Baron. So makes that Zig's all the more effective with these AoE and bombs and such. So. Actually, the Zigs are rushing to Baron themselves. They might want to be starting this off. They've got some vision. They're able to pick off the wards one by one. Red Cloak finishing that one off. And they're going to start off with Giant Purple Wizard Dude. Giant Dino chasing after Alchemist to do some zoning work. Dodges away from the charm. Well done by that as we see a teleport coming in. That is the new Rumble showing up here. This might very well be a little bit of a rumble around the Baron Pit. There is the smite secure along with the future Mr. Addy Landon. Those combined spells together and Rumble Ulti hitting only Rumble. Or not Rumble Ulti, Zig Zulti. Ah, the word Rumble is in my head. But finally, Zip Rumble does go down as Alchemist is goes off Super River. And that's a double kill for Lee Sin so far. Grab Diamond Shape. Away. He's got the Guardian Angel though already, so that gets popped when he falls over. And Zig gets the double kill. Lucy picks up the kill. And that is the first ace of the game for Blue Team after picking up a Baron. What the heck just happened on everywhere? I thought Blue Team was really behind, but they get a Baron, and they get an Ace, and it's not usually what teams that are incredibly behind do, so I guess they weren't that far in the hole. Zig's really showing up big that fight, and with some good AoE damage, brought down the Rumble very quickly, and they get back to base in time to deal with the Super Minions, before they even bring down one of the Nexus Towers, and since Nexus Towers do regenerate health at a fairly good rate, It'll probably be back to full health by the next time that purple team can get a good push going on to it. Seeing as blue team now has a Baron buff, and they got all that gold from the Ace, well, as well as the gold from the Baron, so they're probably about even in terms of stats right now. Simply because the Baron buff gives so much artificial gold worth of stats, and then gold gives like gold worth of stats. That's how it works. It converts to gold at a one-to-one -one ratio. Blue buff going over Mr. Eddie again. Smite Q at the same time. Well done, by him. Blue team has no qualms about taking large jungle monsters. They're gonna be going after the dragon next time. That's well back over the wall from Lucy. A few bullets and a few uh, stars. He can shoot stars from his gun. That's interesting. Um I don't know, have you never like thought about how utterly unreasonable it is some of the things that Lucian can do? He can shoot a star from guns. And he can shoot if you max his attack speed, he can shoot like fifty thousand bullets. But anyways. We have Twitch Haw, oh, the Tempest Cripple, given vision after he flashes over the wall in ambush, and he was just a little bit too far up the lane there. 
Oof. That's bad for Purple Team because he is a lot of their late game potential and we're getting towards that later game. We've got a Guardian Angel picked up by the Lee Sin. We've got a few major items completed by pretty much everybody on the board here, so... Save it, let's go. Maybe get a fight, save. He does get one. There's the box. Gonna be lost. The box away doesn't quite land either. He turns around and drops the equalizer as a last ditch effort, but it doesn't seem to work out for him. He comes falling out of the sky on fire. I love Rebel's death animation. It's the best thing in the game. Ooh, that was a close one, Six. Tosses back a bomb, brings out the Mista down to half health and just like two bombs. Zyra is a very squishy champion, especially when you build support Zyra into a death cap and magic penetration. Good lord. Holy god, that's what I'm talking about right now. That's a lot of magic damage. Has no resistances at all. Just a tiny bit of health from the haunting guys and the side stone, so. Goes down very, very quickly. Wonderful for Queen hitting Sentinel mid dash. However, no more CC to follow it up. Mizunari can dash away. Followed up by. Repellent in the air, release, but here is Necrolisi trying to turn this around. He gets a lot of damage to the face first, drops. Turns and runs away as well. I guess that's Kazix and Ariel, both kind of bopped for pretty much nothing there. So, well done by Elise and Lee Sin to do that. As now serial number is roaming around, dropping the good work, leaving down. And looking to try and make a pick happen. That's what Blue Team is looking to do pretty much this whole game. They've got a really disparate team count, actually. They've got the Lee Sin and the Thresh, like the AD Lee Sin, the full on aggressive Lee Sin from the top lane. Look at that build. He's got a Guardian Angel and then Bam. Um, but the Lee Sin, the Thresh, the Elise, all of those are have, have good long range skill shots that they can follow up with and get lots of CC all out there. Get, get good pick potential, as you see right here. Serial number looking to try and get Savior down in the bottom lane. Ziggs following up just to get some damage down there. He's a W when he gets him up. He turns around, he knows he can't escape, so he's just gonna try and bring somebody down and he might be able to do it. Oh, God, he comes in. He's probably gonna be crushing his dreams of getting the revenge kill. There's now Super Drop is in the middle lane. Draft Dion is going down very swiftly. His poison is stacking up. Expunge doesn't quite bring him down, heals with the speed buff, and he gets the final auto attack while his ulti is still running. First taking up that kill, but the poof, more of the damage from Ziggs is just it's unholy. Reese is the one to finish off the kill, but good lord, that Ziggs ulti did so much damage. Hi! Yes, hello, Twitch. So enthusiastic for the time to this ability. Deck for Lee, so you should have scanned the bush a little bit earlier. No, he's gonna get chased down by the spider. There's the slow from the Randuins. He flashes over the wall to escape. That is flash burned just because he didn't scan a bush in time. Oh well. We all make mistakes. Or maybe it wasn't up until the red dot. Maybe the scanner pulled down. Trinket wasn't quite up until he used it, so he didn't really have the opportunity to scan until that very moment when it was far too late for him. Baron going to be respawning in a minute and a half here, and I expect that to be the next area of hot contest between both teams. Seeing as the last one was kind of ended on a silver platter to blue team, I doubt purple team wants to have a repeat of that particular event. They're probably going to be getting over there as swiftly as they can. Equalizer dropping to Kadi as an invisible rat mouse comes up right next to him and tosses out a few auto attacks, gets the easy shutdown roll. Bringing the Twitch back to the game. He's never really out of it, though. I mean, he's been, the Twitch has been doing perfectly fine. Not not exceedingly exceptional. He hasn't been hyper carrying, but he's certainly been holding his own. And now serial number is getting locked down to by a Kazakh. The Drift Dion is around the corner. Knock-up landing on a Mr. Addy. Zonia's hourglass pops by the six to keep it alive a little bit longer. He finally goes down, but not before bringing down Twitch. With him, shutdown world goes over to the rat post. Morton is now up and he's just turning down and trying to flee, but way too squishy, way too immobile. Zyra falls, and now we have a 3v2 in the middle lane. And Kazix finally shows up to help out his team as the Guardian Angel is back up for Lisa. He's going to come out of that and turn around and bring down Neck Release before falling to six. I believe that is a, no, not quite an ace for Purple Team. At least managed to escape with the tiniest sliver of hit points remaining. But they might be able to get 
this and you never know. This is just his spawn. He's here with the pellet. He's tossing it out. He's getting those minions down. And that damage on the Sentinel is pretty intense. So many out guys, but that's just delaying the end at this point. Gotti brings down that kill. And savior, Savior, what are you doing? You can't handle this. Double kill for Lucy. Ace going over to Blue Team after that, all that fighting. That's not the ending I expected, but it's the one we got. This is not a choose-your-own adventure. This is a story set in stone. It's a replay. This has all already happened. You cannot choose your way, but you do get a lot of excitement anyways. Mr. Addy and Gotti are going to be starting up another Baron Buff. Blue Team. They're going to bring it down. It'll be the second of the game going over to them. This game has been topsy-turvy. The purple team was actually discussing the beginning, and then somehow Blue Team had to pull out a bad and then he's seen the property is going around behind him, he's got his ultimate cutting, he's tossing out skewers for everybody who does fall in the end. In a 1 for 4 exchange so far for Blue Team after picking up Baron as well, this is disastrous. Nick Releasey, can you finish somebody off and make it a little bit better? No, he cannot. Mr. Addy escapes again with a sliver of his life. Another. Not quite an ace for Blue Team, since some people respond in time, but another Baron buff at least for Blue Team, and quite a bit of gold into their pockets. They are up and double gold for the first time in a long time. And it's not voting well from Purple. To be fair, Purple Team does actually have quite a good late game. If this game goes on any longer, it's very likely to get to the super late game, where Twitch, if positioned correctly, can utterly wreck whole teams. That's the, that's the big hit, though. He's got a lot of people to help in position. That Zyra and the Equalizer from the Rebel ulti can do a lot of work. He's zoned out the blue team, keeping the Twitch safe. But he can't just run into three people like he did there. He can't play Super Submarine Battle and run right into the middle of three enemy team members and expect to not pay the price. And he, he did indeed pay the price. He got two kills, if I recall. But he went down in the end. Now Kamista is caught a little bit out of position. The hook doesn't quite land, but it doesn't matter. Dragon Bird is going to knock Zyra against the wall. And she's got to fall in. But Mr. Addy is on a killing spree. He passes loops over the wall to try and help somebody out. Zig Zoldy not going to be landing on anybody. And that's actually quite a big deal. They could maybe pick a fight here. If they, if they pick one before Lucy shows up. If Ari goes in, like literally now, they could get a good fight. But Lucian's on his way, and he's about to more than even the odds in the favor of the blue team. They have lost their window of opportunity. The hook lands on the sentinel. Draft Iron going in, but he goes in a little bit too deep. His team can't quite follow up. One for one so far. Grimorath is on a killing streak as Twitch is trying to keep his distance as best as he can. Mr. Addy turns around, lands a cocoon on the savior. That is him stunned up, but nobody else really follows up. So it looks like he's going to be two for one overall. Blue team going to back up. Maybe get another push going on in this lane. Wouldn't be surprising to see them push up this lane. They've got the Baron buff running on them. They've got quite a bit of siege potential. They've got Ziggs, Lucian, Super Parappa. I don't want to get out of there. Yeah, he was looking to maybe ambush somebody. He's got a little bit too formidable a force to ambush as just a lone rat. That's when the turret going down. And to be fair, Purple Team still has an 8-4 turret lead. They have a lot of map control with the Blue Team right here, but Blue is managing all of these barracks that continue to win the game. That, in addition to the fact that Zyra's Sorcerer's Shoes are on cooldown, that's, that's got to be the biggest deal right here that I see on the board. And I apologize for any visual artifacting you might see on the screen. I tried a different recording software this time, and I, I'm not going to be doing it next time, because it's this. this. I don't like it, so we're going to be going back to good old not like that pretty soon, but for this recording, I didn't want to go back and record another whatever amount of time of gameplay, at least 40 minutes, because that's what we're approaching on right now. So, this is what you get. I apologize, it won't happen again, probably. I mean, I don't want to make that sort of promise, because then if it does happen again, somebody's going to yell at me, but it probably won't happen again. You know what's interesting? Classics picked up a Bloodthirster. 
That's interesting. I don't think I've seen Dragons do that in quite a while. I just think they got to change. Dude, Graf Dian is getting left to find. He's getting slowed down. Zig Zulti tossed out just to slow him up a little bit. But he does have that Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Connie's Banshee's Veil going to be blocking the slow from Necrolisi, and they will continue on with the chase. He flashes forward. He dashes forward. He gets the red buff slow, but the Equalizer going to be keeping him okay. That is Equalizer. Burned defensively as Super Crap is going in with Mr. Eddie in the mid lane. Skewers for spiders. There's Alchemista. Snaring up Serial Hunter. Gonna be escaping. Not gonna be escaping. Flash forward. Hook forward. Nine turns back. And Alchemista. Fuck. Fucks is on his own, I guess. That's not gonna be enough. Serial Hunter breaks down that kill as Savior gets hit by the calling in the face as well as a bomb on the backside. Ziggs finishing that one off. And Nick Alisi. There's, there's just so much everywhere. Double kill for Thresh as Sentinel is pushing in the top of the Pacific Rap, but there are people all over the everywhere doing the everything. Turret falls as Mr. Addy has to stop on Super Rap the damage is coming out from Mr. Cotty. Mr. Cotty has so many names. There's ten of them. That's more than nine. Cotty gets the key. <sighs> this has been a harrowing and lengthy match. Can someone please win this game? I, I can't keep going for much longer, but I will soldier off. I will soldier off for you, friends. Twitch has just picked up a Negatron cloak as well as a blue trinket. Blue trinket gonna be helping him out and checking those bushes before he walks into them. Always a key thing to do against a pick comp such as on blue team. That is a lot of damage just coming out from the satchel charge into Sentinelite. Ready to see what sort of damage. Grimorant can put out with the rest of his spells, but I guess we're not going to be able to see- Oh god, that ulti did a lot! Sentinel now being chased by serial number Mr. Addy as well, going to be thrown out the hook at some point, most likely! And actually doesn't throw it out at, at all, doesn't really need to. The threat of it is enough to zone Ari back into the damage that she needs to take to fall over. There's now Savior hopping out of the bush, but that's his own hourglass. There's too many other people there, and Savior's now going to get the kill. Fox's his own to stay alive a little bit longer. But he gets stunned up by the screen, he gets ignited, he's gonna be falling over his stuff. Saturday night? I I don't know, I was camera didn't even think that it worth paying attention to, so I guess neither should we. Knock back down the end of Kazix. Forcing him away, not allowing him to turn up any kills there. And he, he's in a bad Oh, I can't quite leave over the wall. Mr. Addy is on a rampage. And it looks like Blue Team is also on a little bit of a rampage. Pushing up the top lane, they'll get this out of there, no problem. Evening up the turrets a little bit more. Five to nine, but I mean, it's five to nine. That's only three turrets remaining in that for Blue Team. So they're running. They're running real hard on a gas tank that is in very high danger of going empty. Driving incredibly fast, but if they run out of gas, they will just be driving on their own momentum and they will have nothing to back it up if something goes wrong. So they just kinda hoping that nothing goes wrong. There's the hook line in the central, followed up over the wall by recent as well as the rest. Fox does stop for out there and chasing them down as now. Graf Dian is trying to finish off the kill in the R. He can't quite get that last little skinny bit of health gone though. As the cocoon lands on to Alchemista. Equalizer dropped as well. So many things being used and no one has died yet. Come on, somebody just died. Two lands on the savior, but he can't get anybody off. Cotting nearly okay. Alchemista finally gets the kill as soon as Hourglass is popped by Lumber keeping alive a little bit longer. Mr. Addy flashes away. Everybody is living. Just once, everybody lives. Except for the two people that Zyra killed as well as Rumble. So I guess not everybody. Grimorath is about like. And he's doing so much damage. This is just insane the amount of damage those bombs are doing. <laughs> I don't think he even meant to do that. He just kind of automatically right clicked on that guy and his passive dealt enough damage to take away, I believe, what was a fifth of Twitch's hit points. So. That is a very scary little bomb man right there. He's got a full item build, and I think he just sold his sorcery shoes. What's he gonna do? He's gonna go bootless? That would be an interesting and revolutionary way of zigzagging it up. Yeah, he's gonna be going bootless. He doesn't have any booties in those inventory. He instead has a Lich Bane, so he decides he doesn't need shoes. He needs more swords. I think Lich Bane is a pair of cross swords. I don't know, they're a weird color. It's hard to tell if they're swords or Halloween candy, but 
Maybe their sword's made out of Halloween candy. And maybe that is what Ziggs wants. I don't really know why I'd want that battlefield, but maybe he just wants it in general. I mean, I'd want that. Why does it have to be candy corn? I've, I've always been annoyed by that. Really? Corn? That's when you think of food. What do kids want to eat on Halloween when they're out dressed up as zombies? What do they want to eat? I would like to eat a candy sword. Or maybe, I don't know, a candy skeleton. But I get candy corn. You can tell I have a lot of very deep running gripes. I, there are undercurrents within my childhood that have haunted me until this day because of candy corn. But that's a topic for another time and perhaps a better session. A smite's gonna be securing the Baron Nasher for the third time from the team. This Elise has been very unpleasant for Smites, not that there's been too much contest from uh, the Kazakhs on the other side. He's been a little bit uh, Smite shy, actually, and that might be explained by the fact that his Elder Lizard is on cooldown. So, one no you, you know you cannot Smite while that is on cooldown. Timers in the game. Three Lance from Draft Guy is going to be following it up, and he's rushed behind him. So he's on a killing spree. Dragon falls, so that's consolation prize going to purple team as Alchemista laughs about that. And we have grabbed that and pushing up the bottom lane. Leap over the wall of the Gathers. Take down his white camp as well. And we're getting to that point in the game, you know that point. They call it the mythical six items late game, where everybody has six items and it's a very late time on the map. Uh, it's really not. He lands and... <laughs> I don't know why. That, that was funny. Just, everything was shot at him and he dodged away from all of it just by pressing one button. Or I suppose two. He pressed the button to place the wall and he pressed the button to jump to it. So Alchemista goes down to half health. He goes down to low half health. Probably going to be going down to zero health here. The dragon's ready to play it. So Grab dying is on a rampage. And this could be the end of the end for the purple team right here. They are already pushed up. They are taking that turret in the middle lane. They're going to be moving on. Joining their team. Taking the turret down to the bottom lane as well. No reason not to do that. Lots of damage going on to save him. Fox is going to die last to stay alive as the skewers land on the ground. Die on the bank for me. This is on his hourglass. Flash for it. Dribble and he doesn't get the kill. Super Parabola is not going down. Mr. Addy is trying to do this, but he's got a really stinky police fight, so he's not have that damage at all. Twitch brings him down as Rumble falls off to the side to Lucy and Twitch. Twitch is a very bad situation. And then dash forward. That's when Pink Ward just drops. Triple kill for Lucy. And now Kazix is uh, chasing. He keeps trying to leap away, but a wonderful play gives Lucy and the Quadra kill. That is the final nail in the coffin, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead and take this inhibitor. Curry got in the middle lane, pushed down, so they'll swap over to there to get that inhibitor as well. It's nearly dead. Just a few auto attacks from Lucian. Gonna be finishing that off. Already one of the Nexus towers has fallen, so they're gonna go ahead and take the other one. The Nexus is the next target of their wrath. Alchemist is trying to keep them away, but they're gonna be chasing after that. Kill on Osiris seems paltry in comparison. Victory! Victory they will have! Blue team picking up the win there. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed.